It's been an incredible first summer in the Polycrub. We've had tomatoes like I've never seen in years previous, loads and loads of aubergines, eggplants, basil, melons, butternut squash, so, so much. But now that we're in autumn, it's time to clear out what's growing inside because it's just not going to survive the winter. It's not going to be productive. And what I would like to do is make this space someplace that is a four season food gardening space. And so I took down the tomatoes. It was with great sadness. Although I picked all of the remaining tomatoes, including the red and green ones. And I have a huge crate of them that I'll be using to make green tomato relish, green tomato chutney. And I have a new recipe for green tomatoes. And if it turns out really good, I'll share it with you perhaps next year. Now, after I took the tomatoes down, it was time to take the basil down, the, the basil, basil, however you'd like to call it. And there were plenty of leaves left. They weren't in great condition, but they were good enough to make a really big batch of pesto, which I've frozen and it's tucked away for another time in the winter. I've left the sweet potatoes for now. They're still growing, I think. The leaves are green, but I did take down the butternut squash. I can't believe how empty it is in here. At times this summer, it was like a jungle. I could barely move through here for all the, the plants growing. And now the only thing left are the sweet potatoes, which I'll leave in for just a little bit longer. Although I have given them a bit of a trim just down below to tidy them up. And there are a couple of others. The Korean mint I'm leaving here. It will survive and grow as a perennial if under cover. This is a type of uh, tree spinach, I believe it's called. And I started just one plant this year. It's an interesting flavor. Not sure if I'll keep growing it, but I will save seed and we'll see, you never know. And then the ginger over here that has been crammed in beside one of the tomatoes, it's grown pretty well and has some new rhizomes down there. And then we have our harvest of butternut squash, which is over here. And we got nine squash off of those two plants. And they come in all different sizes and shapes. Quite large ones down here at this end. And then I've arranged them so they gradually get a little bit smaller. And the smallest one is not that bad. I would say it's pretty normal sized. And aside from all of these more mature squash, I did also trim off the immature squash when I was cutting down all of the plants. So we'll use these as courgettes, zucchinis. These raised beds that we built earlier in spring have worked beautifully in keeping the insides nice and moist. So it's retaining moisture really well and the mix was really nutrient rich enough to grow incredible crops. But now that we've taken or I've taken out the crops that were in here, the level of the compost and soil mix has dropped quite a bit. And also a lot of the nutrition has been used up by the plants that were in here. It was really intensively planted. And so the first step before I do anything with this space is applying more compost. Now you can use all different types of compost. When I say compost, it could mean garden waste compost. It could mean mushroom compost. What I tend to use because it's inexpensive and it's accessible is horse manure. And I use a lot of it. And I have a video talking about how to use horse manure, some of the things to look out for, and the benefits of using it in the garden if you want to learn more. But I've started with this side, so this bed here in the polycrub, and I've topped up the bed with this nice thick mulch of partially composted horse manure. And it's safe enough to plant in, but you can see that there are still clumps in here that haven't completely broken down. 
It doesn't smell like manure though, and it's fine to handle as well. There's all kinds of worms living in it too. So I've applied this to top up these beds, to add nutrition, and also to give a medium for new plants to start growing in, which I have here. In August, I sowed a lot of different seeds out in the vegetable garden. Now, some of those are going to continue growing there over the winter with protection, but some of them are going to be growing inside the polycrub, where it's nice and warm and protected from wind. And the greens that we'll get, like these lettuces and, and rocket here, they'll be much bigger, much healthier, much leafier, and we'll be able to rely on these to have fresh greens through the winter. Well, that's, that's the hope. And so I've started already with planting up these Japanese greens here. And in this bed, I'm going to be taking these salad greens and some other plants that are out in the garden right now and planting them up here and also in the other bed. In August, I sowed quite a few seeds in these three areas that are covered in nets. And as you can see, all of the green leaves underneath are looking pretty healthy. There have been some pests, but that's not a big deal. But they are growing really thickly. And I've not thinned them out because I'm going to be transplanting some of them up into the polycrub. And in this bed, for example, we've got some pak choy, there's spinach, and I've actually been picking some of the spinach already. There's also spring cabbage right there in a row and those need to be spaced out and planted back out into this bed as well. I've been working in here pretty much all morning and it is a kind of a cold drizzly day outside, cloudy, not great. It's towards the end of October now but here inside the polycrub it's been at most just over 20 degrees Celsius. And the lowest temperature earlier on was almost 17. And this is with the door open. So this is potentially going to be a really warm and again, protected place where crops can grow over winter. And that was the idea with getting the polycrub is that it is a resilient structure. It's not going anywhere. It can stand up to our local storms and make it possible for me to grow the crops that I cannot grow outside, both in summer and in winter. Now for this bed, this is mainly going to be about lettuces. And I've got some right here. These were growing out in one of the beds. They're about five inches tall, four to five inches tall really healthy and they came up just by hand. I didn't dig them, I just scooped my hand in under them and pulled them up. And all I'm going to be doing is dividing them carefully, again with my hand, so that I have individual plants. So they're just coming apart really easily and that is the beauty of no-dig gardening is that a lot of the plants will grow so loosely in that top layer of compost that it's just so much easier to harvest them and also to pull them out. And they are completely supported nutrient and moisture wise by that compost. I've divided up that first clump, actually two clumps, and I have a good number of decent sized lettuce seedlings ready to be planted. They've got good root systems. I've got a little bit of the compost left from the original growing place. Now it's time to get them planted here in this mulch in this bed. I'm not planting them all the way down into the original soil and compost that I had in here, but just into this mulch. It's nice and rich and moist and they'll grow perfectly fine in mulch. I think that's one of the common misconceptions when people apply compost to beds. They think that you've got to dig through it to the soil underneath to plant your plants, and that's, that's not necessary. You can plant directly into the compost. Plants will grow away really happily. Now, as far as planting these, I'm going to be putting them in just to the depth that they were growing, 
and I'm going to gently firm the compost in and space them out about four or five inches apart. And I think that will give me some decent sized lettuces. And so I'm going to do this in a grid pattern, keep it nice and simple. And any of the little guys that I have left over, such as these, I'll probably plant them a lot closer together. Now, when it comes to spacing, if you plant plants closer together, they're not gonna have as much space to grow, both above ground and below. And so the plants tend to be a lot smaller. But if all you're after is baby salad greens, then that's fine. And in fact, I have a section in the very first part of my book on growing salad greens. And I talk about spacing for growing heads of lettuce or uh, cut and come again lettuce as well. And so if you have a copy of my book, you'll be able to flip to that page and learn a little bit more about growing salad greens. And if you don't have my book already, you can pick it up directly from me. I sell signed copies, but it's also available through major booksellers. And I'll leave links down in the video description if you wanna learn more. I've finished planting up this far bed and you can see that the lettuces here on this end, they're about four to six inches apart for the most part. And there are a couple of different lettuce varieties. And I've also planted some salad rocket in here. Here's an odd one in the middle of the lettuces. And then I've got a row of them here and they're a little bit closer together. Now for the most part, these lettuces I'm going to be treating as cut and come again. So basically harvesting the outer leaves and then leaving the plants to grow. So not killing the plants, but taking a little harvest at a time. These on the other hand, these green boy Asian greens, these I'll be harvesting as one whole plant for the most part. I will be taking some leaves off but we do like having these in stir fries and in Asian inspired soups. And you can see that the spacing is much wider because they need that space to be able to grow to the size that they can. However, I had a few extra small ones and so I've planted them here much closer together. They'll still grow, but they will not grow to the size of these ones that have more space. This has been a really good day's work. And the last thing I'm gonna do before I close up the polycrop is give this all a really good watering in. I'm going to water the sweet potatoes too. Just keep all of this compost and soil moist. Now, it was a day to plant this up and to get it prepared, but it took a couple of days to clean out the polycrop. But I'm continuing that succession sowing in a way with succession crops that will be able to give us food through all the seasons. And polycrubs, the structure that I'm growing in, they are available in the UK only, I believe. But you can use polytunnels, you can use greenhouses, you could even use fleece out in the garden to create a covered and protected area to be able to have greens and crops right through the winter. Cold frames are another option. But I would say the cheapest and easiest way to create a covered and protected space for you to be able to grow greens, at least in a temperate climate like here, is to create a fleece tunnel. And you can buy fleece, horticultural fleece, it's a white fabric, and then you can drape it over 
hoops, or you can create a structure out of bamboo canes or other types of wood, and then weigh it down around the edges. And then in that way, you create a space inside that's a bit warmer, a bit more protected from frost and snow, and also it's protected from wind, which is a big thing in winter. You can also buy fleece tunnels ready-made, and you can see one of those in action in this next video.